What's going on guys, it's Doms, and today I'm bringing you guys a new reaction. This is going to be the first time I've tried to learn rugby. Uh, this video is called Rugby for Beginners, a guide to the rules of rugby union. I've seen like little snippets of rugby here or there. Like I've seen, a, you know, in like a compilation of like multiple sport videos, there'll be like a rugby play or something. Um... I, I know very little about the sport, to be quite honest, and with being an American football fan, I kind of feel like that's a shame. So today I am going to try to learn rugby. Um, if you guys like this, let me know down below in the comments and links to all my social media, Discord, uh, Twitch, my gaming channel, all that will be in the description as well. And I'm going to jump right into this. I really liked what I saw just from like the, before we jump in, uh, w when you highlight over a thumbnail, I don't know if some of you are on PC. I don't know if it happens on mobile or not, actually. I think it does. Um, but if you highlight over a thumbnail on YouTube and it shows like the little snippets of what the video is like, this had some like animations and stuff, which actually seemed pretty cool. So that's the reason why I picked this one. Um, if you guys have a better video, let me know. But I thought this would be a good introduction. Rugby is one of England's most popular sports and is played by people of all ages, shapes and sizes, male and female. This animation teaches you about the main laws of rugby so you can have more fun watching or playing this great game. You play rugby in a jersey, shorts and boots with studs and you wear a mouth guard to protect your teeth. Boots with studs, are that, is that like the same thing as cleats? I'm guessing we just call them cleats over here and you guys call them boots with studs. I don't know. <laughs> the ball is an oval shape and looks a bit like an egg. Because rugby originated in England, there are a lot of English expressions. There are two versions of rugby, okay. rugby union and rugby league. This film is about rugby union, oh, the okay. most popular version of rugby around the world. The rugby pitch is about the same size as a football pitch. On the pitch, there are a number of... So is rugby league just like a a specific, like the professional leagues, they have like their own set of rules? Like I know certain sports and like, um, like baseball, there's slightly different rules depending on what age you are. Like even in high school, you're allowed to use metal bats and uh, I think college you can too. So like that's a big jump going to the pros is having to use a wooden bat. So like there, there are certain like variances. So I don't know if if that's what it is i'll have to look into uh to league play as well of lines i'm sure people will tell me but... from the halfway line from this line the game is started or restarted after a score so like any Next other sport is the 10 meter line after the kickoff the ball must cross this line <laughs> okay. then there is the 22 meter line next is the try line behind this line you can score a try by touching the ball down on the try line okay. are the rugby posts two vertical posts and a crossbar so does touching the ball down mean like you get it past there and touch the ground with it I, i'm sure the that last line is the dead ball line and marks the end of the field okay on the sides you find the five meters line and the 15 meters line you know what? This actually explains why in the NFL, the field goal post used to be right at the edge of the end zone. Now they moved it to the back just because instead of having two posts, it's one in the middle. And what was happening was like a receiver would start like here. He'd go up here and cut in, catch the ball, be like two steps away from the post. And somebody would just like slam him head like head first into the post. Like just a lot of people got injured. So they moved it back 10 yards. The, the end zone's 10 yards and american football um but they moved it back to the back so like where the dead ball line is just to prevent any of those further injuries line during a line out the players must stay between these lines a game is two halves of 40 minutes and has a half time i want to go back field. to those on the sides you find the five meters line and the 15 meters line okay during a line out the players must stay between these lines a line a game out is two halves of 40 minutes and has a half time break of about 10 minutes a rugby team has 15 players 
Eight of them are called the forwards. These guys form the scrum and line out and do the more heavy work. Next, you have seven players called the backs, and they do most okay. of the fast running. The and then scrum the half connects the forwards maybe? and the backs. Oh. The last man is the full back. Full back. You play rugby with your hands and feet. Most of the time. That explains why there's a fullback position in, in American football, and then we have halfback quarterback. I, I never really understood that because I, I understood the quarterback would be... I, I've gone into too much football. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> time you carry the ball in your hands. But rugby is a team sport, so you pass the ball to your teammates. When you pass, you are only allowed to pass backwards. You do this mainly by an underhand throw across oh. the body. But if okay, you wish I, I really don't want to keep comparing to like American football, <laughs> but American football is rooted in rugby. Like it, it, it stems from the game of rugby. So that makes sense why in football only, and when I say football, I mean American football, just going forward for the video, just to make it easier so I don't have to keep clarifying. But in football, the only person who can throw the ball forwards is the quarterback. Every other throw that you do has to be backwards or lateral, as we call it. Um, so now that makes a lot of sense. Because, like, between plays, like, obviously, I don't think in rugby you really stop like we do over here. Um, but, like, during the play, like, you can catch the ball and then flip it to somebody else and flip it to somebody else. Uh what was the play? I think it was, there was a college team called like Trinity or something. Just look up like the college football Trinity miracle or whatever. But it was like 22 different laterals on a kickoff or like a short pass or something. And they ended up winning the game on it. There was no time left. So they just kept throwing the ball to each other and it was awesome. But yeah, that, that, that makes like, I, I'm so many things are going to connect. I feel you like you can pass overhand too. You may pass as much as you want. If you decide to kick the ball, you may do so, usually to gain territory. Okay, so you kick to go forward, throw to go back. It's like NFL mixed with WWE. <laughs> there are several ways to score points. The most important way is to score a try. You score a try when you place the ball on the ground okay, on so I was or behind right. the try line of your opposition. The result is five points. Because you scored a try, your team may also attempt to kick the ball from the ground, but it must carry between the posts and above the crossbar. This is called a conversion and awards your team an extra two points. Okay, so in the NFL, you don't have to touch the ball down in the, the try zone or the end zone, as we call it. Um, you just have to get either two feet in bounds. Well, yeah, you have to have two feet in bounds, or, or the ball just has to cross the plane. It doesn't have to touch the ground. It just has to cross that white line, separating it from the, the rest of the field. Um, also, a touchdown, as we would call it, instead of a try, is six points, and the conversion or the point after attempt would be one point but in the nfl you can also try to score another touchdown from the two yard line and get two points so now it makes so much sense where the scoring system from the nfl came from i never understood why it was seven points for a touchdown this makes so much sense now why is it seven points there who knows but at least i understand like okay so together you score seven points should the referee award you a penalty kick, your team can choose to restart the game, kick for a line out, or kick the ball between the posts. If you kick between the posts and score, you get three points. You so can like also a field get goal. points at any time during the game by scoring a drop goal. When you intentionally drop the ball in front of you and kick it immediately after it hits the ground. <laughs> so the As last time, I, I know I'm pausing a lot, but the last time there was, we call that a drop kick. The last time that happened, it was actually a guy named Doug Flutie who had, uh, he, he's a college legend, but the, the last time it had happened in the NFL was like the fifties or something like that. And he ended up doing it for the Patriots. And I remember watching the game live and being like, wow, that's actually really cool to see something that just hasn't been in the game. So I, 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 I kind of 
feel like I need to be watching rugby because I love football and everything so far in football comes from rugby. Like there's nothing new so far really other than like the throwing the ball forward instead of kicking it. Version and penalty, it must travel between the posts. This also wins your team three points. Oh, he just stole it. So when they kick the penalty kick, is it on a tee? Do they place the tee down or does the ball just like stick up like that? Or do they just place it on the side and kick it from there? Suppose you throw the ball forwards okay. or you drop. Because in the NFL, when we kick a field goal, somebody like the, the here's the ground, like you place the ball here and then somebody holds it with their finger and you kick it out from there. And on a kickoff, you place it on a tee. So that... There was nobody holding it, so I'm guessing it was a T, but I don't know. Off the ball, and it bounces forward. In both cases, the referee will decide that a scrum must be formed. A scrum is a restart after a foul, where the ball travels forward from the hand. The forwards of both teams set in a specific formation and set against each other, like you can see in this view from above. Next, the scrum half will roll the ball straight into the middle of the scrum, and both teams are allowed to contest for the ball by pushing and using their feet after the ball has entered the scrum to move the ball backwards. While the ball is in the scrum, you are not allowed to touch it with your hands. When the ball comes out of the scrum, it is usually the scrum half who will pass it to one of the waiting players, and the next attack will start. That's crazy. That is so awesome. That's so much better than like a, a face-off in the NHL or like... I mean, they're, they're, you don't even get anything like that in the NFL. You just kick the ball to the other team, and it's like, all right, now it's your turn to play. That is awesome. I love that rule. I got to see, like, oh, here we go. And they hold on to each other for support on the other team, too. That's awesome. That is so cool. Okay, if the ball out. leaves the field of play because it's kicked out or because a player with the ball is tackled and falls across the touchline or the foot of a player who is holding the ball touches the touchline, the game will be restarted with a line-out. To form a line-out, the forwards of both teams will stand in separate lines between the 5 and 15 metre lines. Next, the ball will be thrown straight in between the two lines by the team in possession. The player who can jump the highest, and he may be lifted by his teammates, may catch the ball or tap it to his scrum half. With this ball possession, they can start to attack again. I'm going to go ball back. In setting out. I, I just want to watch that one more time because I'm not quite sure I fully understood that. To form a line out, the forwards of both teams will stand in separate lines between the 5 and 15 meter lines. Okay. Next. The ball will be thrown straight in between the two lines by the team in possession. The player who can oh. jump the highest, and he may be lifted by his teammates, may catch the ball or tap it to his scrum half. So he can be lifted. With this ball possession, okay. they can start to attack again. So it's basically like a throw-in in soccer, or what you what everybody else calls football. Okay, that that but you line up in a specific way. That makes sense. Sorry, I got something in my eye. The unique thing about rugby is that you can stop players by tackling, but can only tackle a player who is in possession of the ball. You're only allowed to use Stupid your hands, motorcycle. arms, and body. You can grab the man with the ball everywhere except his neck and head. You are not allowed to kick him or tackle him while he's in the air. I'm guessing no low blows if either, you do, right? The referee will send you off the field immediately by issuing a yellow or red card. The most common way to tackle is using the shoulder and arms, targeting an opposition player below the waist so he falls to the ground. Oh, below the waist. So in the NFL, let's go back to right where he makes contact. 
in the NFL, you would do that like somewhere between like the waist and the chest, like so, like in the the stomach area, um, because basically what you're doing is not only are you going for the tackle, but if somehow they slip away, if you hit them in the right spot, you might make them a little winded or something and let your teammate get to them. Uh, at least that's the way I was taught how to tackle. Um, but yeah, that it's very similar. Like him coming in is almost exactly what you'd see in the NFL. You do see some people go low, especially if the, the guy they're tackling is bigger than them. They'll go low and try to take the legs out and trip them up. So during the game, you will often see two situations, a ruck and more. But what are these? Suppose a player carrying the ball makes contact with a player who wants to tackle him. But instead of falling on the ground, they keep standing up. Immediately, teammates of both teams will join this formation to compete for the ball, which will be somewhere in the middle. This formation is called a maul. Okay. The man with the ball will try to turn his back to his opponents and make the ball available for his teammates. If a maul takes too long, the referee will award a scrum in favor of the team moving forward. So it's basically just a game of tug of war and whoever... A ruck is formed okay. after the man with the ball is tackled and the players fall on the ground. During this situation, two very important rules come into play. The man who made the tackle must let go of the tackled player, and the man who is tackled must release the ball immediately. Oh. Players of both teams will bind as a unit with each other over the ball group and compete to win the ball with their feet and pushing back the opposing players. There are several ways to be offside. One of the most common ways is during a maul when players are competing to get possession of the ball or to stop them all being driven towards the try line. The offside line starts at the heel of the foot of the last person in the mall and runs across the field from touchline to touchline. Okay. No one can enter the mall unless they do so from behind that player's foot. Though rugby is a physical and sometimes Wait, tough... so... Is that just to prevent people from like running around and going in from the other side? I don't really get that, but okay. Sport. A rugby player always respects his opponent and the referee. Whatever the referee decides, you will never contest their decision or risk being penalized. After every game, you pay your respects to your opponents and the referee by applauding them when they leave the field. Oh, and the referee. Oh, okay. So in America, a lot of times, like, uh, the only sport I know for sure that actually, like, lines up is um, NHL. The, like, all the players will, like, skate by each other and, you know, give everybody a high five or whatever. You know, just just kind of like, good game, good game, good game. You know, if you see a friend, you might stop, shake his hand, be like, you know, I'll get you next time or something like that. But you never see it with the referees. Like, the referees over here are, like, the bad guys. Um, they They get very little credit in any sport and a, like yeah we have rules where you can't like argue with them like if you in baseball the moment you argue with a with an umpire you're, you're out of the game like that's the the fastest way to get thrown you you could tell the, the empire to to f off before you can argue a striker or ball um so like i don't know there, there's not much respect so i i really like that they have the respect for the the referees because they really deserve it i mean they're out there doing probably a harder job than the athletes are at times i mean wa watch a hockey game it doesn't have to be nhl watch any hockey game or wa just watch the referees watch how much effort they have to put in just to get out of the way of plays get stay out of the way of the puck while still maintaining their eyes on every play it's actually amazing to watch them so i, I really really like the fact that they show their respect like that. And sportsmanship are two of the most important values of rugby union. Hopefully, with this explanation, you will enjoy watching rugby even more. 
But if you are a boy or a girl and want to play rugby yourself, go to englandrugby.com and find a rugby club near you. It's well, I don't live in England, rugby, so... Whether you're 5, 15, 25 or 35, it's fun for all ages. Not to mention I have spine issues and knee issues. Your local issues club will train you to become a rugby player so you can play safe and ensure you enjoy this fantastic game. All right, well, I uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. That that was really cool. I think I think I'll understand rugby a lot easier than cricket because there are so many similarities between American football and rugby. Um, so I, I I think honestly, like I could jump in right away and watch like highlight videos and stuff like that. I think seeing the game will make me understand the few things that are different. But f overall, it seems like. It seems almost like a faster paced NFL. And I know that seems weird because a lot of rugby fans who watch the NFL, they think it's like very fast, very hard hitting and all that, which it is. But what people don't realize who don't typically watch football is that there's so much downtime. You don't get that in rugby. It seems like there's just constant action. And I think that's going to be the main difference. Um, in the NFL, you know, you tackle someone and then you have, I think it's like 40 seconds or how long is the play clock? 35, 40 seconds, something like that to get your next playoff. So like, you know, you have five seconds of action and then 40 seconds of downtime or 30 seconds of downtime and then another five seconds. There, there's people who on YouTube, they'll cut down an entire NFL game, which would be like three hours long into like 16 minutes and you don't miss a single play. Every, every play fits in that 16 minute window. So it's a lot of downtime. So I think that's the biggest difference. Yeah, in the NFL, you're going to get a lot of a lot more big hits and, you know, a lot more highlight plays and stuff like that. But I think rugby would be the more entertaining game. Like, even in a bad game, I feel like a bad rugby game would be more entertaining than a bad NFL game. So I don't know. I'm interested to, to see more. So if you guys have highlight videos you want me to see, link them down below. I really want to do some more rugby, uh, some more cricket. If you guys have other sports link those as well um because i will i do read every comment even if i don't reply or leave a like i try to at least like leave a like or something just to let you know that i saw it but even if i don't do that it doesn't mean i didn't read the comment i read every comment so if you guys have any other sports you guys want me to react to or any other just foreign things in general that an american might find cool let me know below hope you guys enjoyed and i will catch you guys on the next one